construct an orthonormal basis for R3 by applying the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization procedure to the vectors 111, 101, and 110. Before we apply Gram-Schmidt, let's remind ourselves how I find the part of a vector that's orthogonal to another vector. So we draw vectors u and v in the plane. I assume the angle between them is theta and that theta is between 0 and 90 degrees. We don't need that assumption, but that's enough to remind us of our formula. Now, I can decompose our vector u into a part that's parallel to v and a part that's perpendicular to v. So you'll note u is equal to u perp plus u parallel. So if I want the part that's perpendicular to v, I just take u and subtract off the parallel part. Now, if I can find a formula for u parallel, then we have something we can work with with numbers. The way I get our formula for u parallel, well, if you note, know, okay, if I take a look at what we have with the right triangle, okay, the hypotenuse is gonna be the length of u. So if I consider theta and the hypotenuse, then the length of u parallel is the length of u times cosine theta. Now, unless I'm told something about theta, we're gonna to have to find a way to substitute that out. And that's where our inner product comes in. Okay, we have a geometric formulation of our inner product, which is given by, okay, inner product of u and v is equal to length of u times the length of v times the cosine of the angle between your vectors. So if I move length of u, length of v to the other side, I can substitute out cosine theta from our length of u parallel. So that means the length of u parallel is just gonna be, okay, what do we have? I'm gonna take out cosine theta. So that's gonna give me u with v inner product over the length of v. So that's our length. All I need to do now is multiply by the direction. Now we don't know if v is a unit vector or not, so I'm gonna change it to a unit vector and that's gonna give us our direction. So the direction is gonna be v divided by the length of v. This gives us our decomposition of u parallel as its length times its direction. So when I put that together, what do we get? We have inner product of u and v over the length of v times v divided by the length of v, which gives me u inner product with v over the length of v squared, or v inner product with itself, times v. That's u parallel. To get u perp, we subtract that off of u. So our formula for the perp is gonna be u minus inner product uv over inner product v with v times v. To apply Gram-Schmidt, we just take the vectors we're given and we subtract off successive parallel parts. The parallel parts are going to be to only the vectors that come out of the Gram-Schmidt process. Once I put one of our vectors through the process, we never revisit it. So once you've applied Gram-Schmidt, you can pretend that vector doesn't exist anymore. Now, to begin, we just pick our first vector, leave it as is. Okay, I'm not going to do unit vectors until the end of the process. So in this case, Pick your first vector, that's my u1. I go to u2. We take our second vector, 1, 0, 1. I subtract off the parallel part to u1. So it's gonna be, take the dot product, so it's gonna be one plus zero plus one gives me a two, divide by the length squared of u1. So that's gonna be one plus one plus one gives me a three. Compute, I get one third minus two thirds, one third and we wait for unit till the end. For our third vector, okay, what do we do? I'm gonna subtract off the part that's parallel to U1 and the part that's parallel to U2. So we're gonna do our dot products, divide by length squared. So dot product of U1 with U3, we get one plus one plus zero gives me a two. The length of U1 squared is a three. Then we put in our U1 then that's gonna be minus the parallel part to u2. So I take the dot product of u2 with u3. So it's gonna give me one third minus two thirds, gives me a one third. Then the length of u2 squared is gonna be one ninth 
plus four ninths plus one ninth, six ninths, that's gonna give me a two thirds. So this term here is gonna to collapse to a one half and we put our U2 in. We compute what comes out, it's gonna be one half, zero, minus one half. Now, we have our three vectors, okay, U1, U2, and U3. I make them unit vectors by dividing by their lengths. So we compute each length and then divide. Now, this gives me an orthonormal basis now. Of course, we wanna check that, so we need to check six equations. Three of them are gonna say, okay, this is for the normal part, are the vectors unit vectors? Well, if we take some of the squares of the entries, okay, first one we get a third plus a third plus a third gives me a one. Second one gives me a sixth plus four sixth plus one sixth gives me a one. And then for the last one I get a half plus zero plus a half gives me a one. So they're all unit vectors. Next, we need that they're orthogonal. So if I take the inner product of any two of those vectors, we have to get a zero. So if you work that out, there's gonna be three of these, you'll see that the check works out. So we have an orthonormal basis. Here's a little bit extra. We get more than just an orthonormal basis from the Gram-Schmidt process. If I take our original basis vectors, rewrite them in terms of the orthonormal basis, okay, so they'll be linear combinations, that's not gonna take any more work. That's just gonna be taking the three Gram-Schmidt equations from the previous board, and then we're just gonna manipulate the terms. So where I had U1, U2, and U3, we're gonna factor out the lengths, so that'll change the coefficients a little bit, and then I just need to isolate our original basis factors. So that's just pushing terms from one side of the equality to the other. Now, when we do that, we get these three equations here. So the idea is I wanna take these three equations rewrite it as a single matrix equation. When I do that, what are we gonna do? First, on the left-hand side, we'll have a matrix where I load each original basis vector in as a column. Okay, so we'll load them in order. Then on the right-hand side, we're gonna have two matrices. The first matrix, we're gonna get by loading in our orthonormal basis in as the columns. And then our third matrix, is just gonna be, we take a look at our equations. The coefficients of each of these equations are gonna give us a column in our third matrix. So each of these tells us how to write these vectors as a linear combination of the vectors in our orthonormal basis. Now, what did we just do? We've taken an invertible matrix, okay, it's invertible, because it's columns form a basis of R3. I've rewritten it as a product of an orthogonal matrix and an upper triangular matrix. Now, orthogonal, that just means if I take my matrix, multiply it by its transpose, I get the identity. Okay, that's nothing fancy. That just comes down to the six equations that we checked to show that our basis was an orthonormal basis. Then we have an upper triangular matrix. All that says is that if I look below the diagonal, we have all zeros. Now, this is a completely general phenomenon. What happens? I start off with an invertible matrix A. Okay, it doesn't have to be three by three, it could be N by N. I'm gonna form a basis of Rn by using the columns of that matrix. We apply the Gram-Schmidt process an orthonormal basis comes out. That orthonormal basis is gonna form an orthogonal matrix by loading in those vectors as columns. Then if we take the relations from the Gram-Schmidt process, that's gonna give us our upper triangular matrix. So we have this decomposition of invertible matrices as orthogonal matrices times upper triangular matrices.